All right, we're given some information. The mean incubation time for a type of a fertilized egg kip at 100.3 degrees Fahrenheit is 20 days. So that means the mean is 20 days. Suppose the incubation times are normally are approximately normally distributed, why well, I have a bell-shaped curve, with a standard deviation of two days. And we want to answer these questions. So what is the probability my random variable egg hatches in less than 18 days? Well, we need to standardize this because we want to be able to look up in the Z table the probability. So I just, oh, I don't know why I put a Z there. <laughs> Z equals, so my X is my 18 minus my population mean over my standard deviation. So basically what I'm looking for is, I don't know where, but somewhere here to the left is 18. And I want to know what that area would be. And again, how I find that area is I do it by looking it up in the table. So the first thing I have to do is get this Z value. So as you can see that if I subtract, I get negative two over two, which is negative one, but that's just my Z value. So now I have to go to my Z table. Boom, there it is. And look up, I'll get a little closer for my blind self. The, the value of Z, negative 1.0, 0, and I see 0.1587. So that says, let me get this out of my way. That says that this area or this probability, get my, my pencil back when I go back to that other thing, my pencil's gone. That says that this area or this probability is 0, 0.1587. So that would be the answer. All right, let's do another one. So it says, what is the probability that a random selected fertilized egg hatches between 16 and 20 days? All right, so let's get all my stuff back here. So if I draw my mean, once again, straight down there, which was 20, and it wants between 16 and 20 days. So in other words, I'm looking for this area. Remember when you're doing a between, you look up the area above, the area below, and you subtract the two areas. So I typically will call this like an upper Z and then a lower Z. And so I use my formula, which is X, which is 20, minus my mean, which is 20, over my standard deviation, which was 2. Well, we can already see that's 0. I typically round these to um, two decimal places because that's the way the table is. This one would be 16 minus 20 divided by 2. So, of course, that's negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So, actually, it'd be right there, right? Two standard deviations, but that's fine. And so, I look up both of these areas in the table. So, 0 actually is when you're at exactly 0, you're at half the data, right? Because that's the standardization where the mean... Um, is zero, so that's 0.5. The other was what, point negative two zero zero, so that's 0 0.0228. So let's go back over here, give my pencil, 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 go back over here. And so that's saying all of this area, which again, hopefully makes sense to you because that's half the data, all right? So half all the way up to my standardized mean, and then this area I've already lost was 0 0.0228, 0228. So to find the area in between, we subtract these two values. So 0 0.5000, 0, 0, 0, 
minus 0 0.0228. I'm going to cheat and get my calculator. Don't tell anybody, though. And I get 0 0.4772. So that would be 4772. That would be the area or the probability. So the probability between 16 and 20. All right, the last one here is I want to know the probability it takes over 22 days. So draw my mean, once again, was at 20. <laughs> Good job with that straight line, right? And now I want to know this area. So if you remember, the table gives you this area up to that point. So that's fine. All I have to do is find this Z value and then I'll do one minus the area. So over the standard deviation, so I get two over two, which is one. I go to my table. Where is my table? Back to my table. I'm on the positive side now. 1.00. I get 0 0.8413. Uh, so point, uh, let's forget every time I move that, I got to put my, my pencil back. So point eight four. So in other words, that is this area, 0 0.8413. If I want this area, then I need to take one minus. Why one minus? Because all the probabilities have to add to one. And I get 0 0.1587, which, think about, was the same answer to part one. Why was that? If you remember, part one, we were at negative one, okay, was my Z. So we had, what, 18? And so we ended up with a Z of negative one. Well, once again, this being symmetric about the mean. That's why we got the same areas.